All right, so first question, how do you plan to pay for all of the needed infrastructure repairs? Well, there's no one in this race who has garnered more resources for infrastructure than John Horn. I have a record of having demonstrated uh, the ability to bring those resources back to the city level. Most of it has come from the state. Uh, we have $280 million over a 20-year um, period that's being generated by the one cent sales tax. We also were one of the leaders of getting the uh, Capital Complex Improvement District approved by the legislature just recently. Over a 20-year period, that fund is going to generate $230 million. So only Senator Horn, only John Horn, has been able to generate over a half of a billion dollars in resources for infrastructure improvements in the capital city. We also know that we can uh, apply and get support from the state revolving loan fund program. We know that we can, we can uh, if, if the city hasn't missed a deadline, uh, we can get some uh, money out of the federal government through EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, which announced a billion dollar infrastructure program uh, about uh, four months ago. And we really hope that the city uh, made application and, and, and sent a notice of intent to apply on that. So we can get the resources. We know how to get the resources. Uh, we first have got to figure out what the price tag is, what the overall price tag is for all of this, because uh, you keep hearing different things about how much it's going to cost. So one of the first things we've got to do is to find out how much it's going to cost and then start the business of putting the jigsaw puzzle for, of funding and the various needs together into a, a, a comprehensive and complete strategic plan. Question okay. number two is what will you do to reduce violent crime? Well, I'm the only candidate who's offered a solid plan as it relates to re the reduction of violent crime. Uh, three years ago, I was able to get a half million dollars uh, to put a study together called the Capital City Crime Prevention Plan. We presented that study that identified what the problems were and the largest of which is that we've got a revolving door in the city. We've got to shut that revolving door. Uh, but we, we also have uh, hot spots that have been identified. We have some things uh, that, that are the uh, early warning signs for possible criminality that we need to, to get our young people work, worked in on because we can prevent a lot of, of, of crime if we catch it, uh, some behaviors early. Uh, we also know that the Violence Reduction Network is something that will avail the city millions of dollars uh, from the Department of Justice for programs, for equipment, for training, uh, and also uh, for technology. So we really feel like we, we can get a handle on crime using technology, using new and alternative programs, uh, putting the Capital City Crime Prevention Plan in place, and also uh, doing more to, to provide a source of, of revenue for salaries and pay increases for our police who are, who are rank and file and the ones you know, who are out, out patrolling the streets of Jackson. Do you believe that there should be a change in the perception of Jackson, and how will you make that change? There's no question we have to, to change the perception of, of Jackson. Our image needs to be changed. The, the way you do that is you fix the streets, you fix uh, the pipes, and, and you get a handle on reducing crime. But the other thing that we've got to do is we've got to get our, our neighbors and, and colleagues in the surrounding communities around Jackson to quit bashing Jackson. There's a lot of that that goes on. That has to stop. And we've got to, to also have better communication between Jackson and the rest of the state. Uh, if, we, if we're able to do that and get people to buy into the idea that this is our capital city and we need to be proud of this capital city and be communicative and supportive of what's going on in the capital city in a very, very positive way.